All right, I I'm on un, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me through the Zoom call? You can you can hear me, but I still can't hear you. Are you guys Nobody's muted? Only th only through my cell phone. I, I, I still can only hear you through the cell phone. No, not 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 through my not through the office phone, no. If if Julie's speaking, I can't hear Julie either. Usually when I'm on Zoom, I can hear the other people on Zoom even when you haven't turned us on in the hall. This is Julie. Oh, I, I, I can hear Julie now. But I still don't hear the, the hall. Talk to her again. Talk to her again. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. One of you guys talk I, to I, her. I, can everybody hear us? Okay, now, now I can hear in the hall. I'm going to hang up the cell phone. Okay, Bill. Yep. You're not. You're not even on seven thirty-two either. That's because we haven't gone live yet. Oh, okay. Did they get it? I think we're good. <laughs> okay, let's get this started. Hold on. Let me go live. Let us go live. Go live, Randy. Hey Bill, they the the sound from the from the halls. They sound like they're little tiny, far far away. You are. You're in Michigan. We're here. Oh. Oh, okay, you sound better. Thank you. Okay, let's do. Okay, let's get this started. Uh, good morning, everybody. I call the Lord to be right before the workshop meeting for October seventeenth. Three here at Mark Small at nine thirty five. Okay. I'll soon leave us in the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Gracious Father, we come before you today to ask for your guidance, support, and wisdom as we make this through life and we work with our Father. Lord, please watch over those traveling to and from our community to keep us all safe. Amen. 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 Okay, Lori, would you give us the roll call, please? Sure, Lori Dalton here via Zoom. Kathy Gregory. Here in the hall. Todd Lombardi. I, I'm not hearing anything from Todd. He turns his mic on. Um, it's on. Early in the hall. Thank you. Uh, Russell McAllister. Present in the hall. Louis Nichols. Present in the hall. Cindy O'Brien. Excuse. 
Okay. And Rod Smith? Present in the hall. And Dwayne Trotter? Present in the hall. Okay. You And then uh, Park Manager Lee Morris? Present in the hall. Okay, thank you. Um, you guys are still sounding like you're in a tunnel and it's very soft, so bear with me. I might have a lot of questions for repeats. Thank you. Okay, before we get into uh, comment, uh, public comment, I'd like to see if there are any additional items that need to be added to the workshop. Mr. Chair, trustees. Yeah, yeah I add, uh, I'd like to add uh, agenda item number six, which is uh, PP38 to the Lieberson uh, PP6 uh, trustee protection policy. Okay, are there any others? Hearing none, uh, we'll jump right into the public comments. Are there any public comments for uh, today's workshop? Anybody on Zoom that would like to make a comment? Yes. Great. Luke? Julie Hope, 1711 Illinois Avenue. I just wanted to thank Todd for the lights on the south side of the small hall for lighting that up at night for us. Um, I, we really appreciate that. Um, I would like money to be spent on lights on the south side of the office, which is it's pitch black at night going to, the, going to your car, to the handicapped places. I think somebody's gonna fall down sometime. If that could be fixed, that would be great. Maybe even a motion light or something. And the, now, the north side fence, it, it sounds nice. It sounds like a good idea, but um, do we own that property past the road? Or does the county own it? Maybe the county should pay for it. I don't know. But uh, I just wonder who's going to maintain it. I mean, how long is it going to stay white? How are you going to weed eat around it without making it look like a mess? And then the second thing is I want to thank Cindy who's not there for keeping the back door, for keeping uh, the whole hall open for the dance. It was much nicer. You got more room to walk around. The only problem was, is that when you go out to the back door to go to the handicapped bathroom, about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, that bathroom door is locked. And then when you try to come back in the large hall in the back door, the fobs don't work and the doors are locked. So then when you go to the doors that are in the middle, those are locked, can't get in. So had to go up to the front to get in there. Those doors are locked by the bathrooms up there and you have to wait for somebody to come out to let you in whenever they come out. So I, I don't know. I hope we're all welcome up there to the hall. It just seems to be a problem that you can't get in and out when there's a function. I know this happens a lot when we have the jammers too. We have to open up the door all the time for people to come in. So, and, and I don't want to uh, dog the maintenance department here or anything, but from seconds. Ohio to New York on that east side, you can't even get two cars through or there anymore. There's too much brush. So I was hoping maybe that could be taken care of without getting your golf cart smacked in the face or scratched or that's it. Thank you. Great. Do I have anybody else that'd like to make public comment? Hearing none, I'll close public comment. Are there any responses from the trustee to the comments? I can respond real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, north side fence, we're going to discuss that here in a little bit. So you'll see we do own that property back there. Um, as far as the locked doors, I'll check into that. Um, but they should not be locked like that. It should work. And then uh, I don't know if uh, our lockup crew locked up the bathrooms earlier now. I'll, I'll check in on that too. And also I'll take a look at the uh, Ohio to New York, the, the brush area there and see, what, see what's up. And for that light out here, I think 
uh, maintenance that's already looked. That's fixed to now. Put that. Yeah. Uh, that light's fixed. It, yeah. It's the other one. I'm not. I'll have to talk to her and find out exactly what she's talking about because the same mm -hmm. one that's on this side is you know shooting out that way that one was fixed that one we had a timer problem and timer. so those yeah. are fixed now okay great okay uh let's have the uh report from the standing committee uh treasure barn barb sewell 6608 dakota street we're getting down to opening this week and it's been a wonderful three months. We've had a lot of work to do and we've got it done and it's looking good. So we want everybody to come out and see. And now our wonderful maintenance department is painting the outside and making that look beautiful too and finishing up our last few things. But we have a shortage of um, strong arms for opening. And we've got so many things, we've got more things than we've ever had before. So we need as much help as we can on Thursday morning early. Um, I thank you, Todd, for all your work and everybody. Okay. Before you leave, Barbara, yep. I want I also want to thank the Treasure Barn for the seven thousand yeah. dollars that's going to uh, come here for the, uh, the purchase of the uh, curtains, the stage curtains. That's much appreciated. Oh, okay. That was when they already allocated. Yeah, it's already oh, it's, allocated. Okay, that it's was, not an yeah. additional. Yeah, oh, said, well, unless, I didn't we had unless. <laughs> right. but I do want to thank you for that because that's sure. going to look uh, nice, yeah, yeah. especially since we're getting ready to discuss the curtains. Yeah, thank you. Thursday morning. Um, could we open up at eight thirty if you want to help out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I have any clubs or organizations that like make comment? Do I have anybody on Zoom from a club and organization? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and close the clubs and organization. We'll jump right into the uh, workshop agenda items. Uh, the first item we have is the insurance renewals fiscal year 2023-2024. Lewis? Um, we are in the process of renewing our insurance with uh, Aegis. And I'd actually uh, like to defer to Lee since he spent most of the time on this while I was doing the health care benefits. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee uh, Lewis. Okay, so the this is for property and casualty insurance. So this is all of our flood insurance, any damage to buildings, uh, liability, auto policies, workers' comp. This covers uh, pretty much everything uh, in the uh, uh, in our insurance uh, aspects for trailer estates. Uh, we the approximate cost for everything at this point in time, including bond packages for uh, for trustees is approximately $131,000. At this point in time, we have $194,000 budgeted. Uh, and uh, there was a concern last year that there was going to be a 50% increase in uh, insurance rates in the state of Florida and especially to special districts and governments. Uh, that did not materialize, thank goodness. And uh, we are uh, pretty much uh, all in, at least right now, at 131 uh, with, uh, with Aegis. That means we've moved all of our flood policies over to uh, the National General under Aegis. Our workers' comp is under Aegis, uh, and so is our property and casualty in our uh, auto policy. And just so everyone knows, we only have one item under our auto policy, and that's our truck. We also, oh, um, so the budget is 194, and that current premium is 135. There's still more to come out of that budget because the flood policy doesn't get paid until it won't get paid until next summer out of this budget. Correct. Correct. So that's so, not a sixty thousand dollar windfall yeah. as it stands, but but it's a very good start. <laughs> good point. And 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 flood insurance uh, this year was approximately thirty eight thousand dollars. We uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We went to um, we did not reinsure the shuffleboard building, uh, and the post office was actually removed from the floodplain for whatever reason. 
but we did not have to uh, uh, ensure that. We actually bumped the policy up a little bit on the office as there wasn't enough coverage on the office building right through here uh, and the, uh, the small hall and the large hall. So um, it's we, we do believe that having another bidder helped keep our prices down a little bit, which was good. Uh, at, if you recall at the last meeting, we, we brought that to you with uh, Pidget or PGIT. Um, their, uh, their cost was uh, 100 and 55,000 versus the 131. Um, and while we probably could have gotten that down a little bit, the, uh, the issue is, is that we just did not have enough time to that, that group. And we uh, left it open for next year that if he if he contacts us in April or May, when the treasurer has more time and park manager has more time to take a look at it and vet it and ask questions, that we'd be in a better position to uh, look at changing if the uh, if the price is right. So, great. Okay. Thank you, Lee, for helping us save money and yeah. for Lewis for actually working with all this and trying to work your way through it. Okay, the next item we have is the update marina lease agreement and remove PP22, which is mine. Uh, we've gone through and updated the trailer estates marina lease. Uh, we've separated it from the parking, I'm sorry, from the rules and regulations. Uh, I did run this by uh, district council and that we remove uh, PP22, which is the actual marina lease, says there's no longer a need for both. So you're going to have one for the marine actual marina lease, as well as one for the um, <laughs> rules and regulations. And in the contract, I did include the, a lot of statements that they have to abide by the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. um, when I went through the contract, uh, I did have a couple of questions or comments that I want to make on page four, uh, item number eight. The last sentence in there says the vessel length is restricted to five feet over the published length established by the marina. Uh, all we have is third, well, I should say 20 foot, 24 foot, 26 foot, and uh, 30 footers. Do I really need to say five foot out? So if it's a 24 foot slip, he's five foot out. No, we don't. So we don't allow that. that out. Yeah. So if if I can, I'd like to delete that last sentence in that paragraph because I don't want any boats sticking out any farther than what the uh, uh, slip it, slip size is. I got to remember it's in the rules and regs. I think it's 18 inches past the end Eight, of the yeah. dock is. Yeah. And then one other thing I had is um, page five, item thir or article 13. Uh, that is uh, the removal and storage of the boat. And if the leaser terminates his agreement, or we have to chain or remove the vessel, do we have a, a trailer? We do not. That, was, that was actually one of the questions that I had about it because one of our options would be to have Innovation Marine remove the boat mm -hmm. and store it, and then they would charge them, not us, the way I see it. Or I guess what I could do is go ahead and rent a trailer, and that would just be an additional cost to the leasee. I would rather just tell them to do it and let them deal with it itself, but then, you know. They're going to basically impound the boat. Okay. And then the last item I had on there is uh, I, uh, Article 26 of securing the boat. And that's on page seven. Uh, mm -hmm. Todd and I have discussed this before, uh, just from the uh, tropical storms and the heavy weather that we get here every once in a while. Um, it doesn't say to actually have the vessel removed mm -hmm. from the water in case we have a hurricane. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do that legally, uh, but what I'd like to say in there is 
maybe I'll even have to say it is just, uh, it is recommended to remove your vessel in case of a hurricane or tropical storm. Uh, otherwise, it it's still, they have to carry the insurance, everything else. Uh, if they damage the docks and think or their boat sinks, it's still on on the lee sea. Uh, do, only... do I want to add any comments to that or not? I would, I would rather have it state mm -hmm. that, you know, we are under the, you know, we can have them remove their boat or they should remove their boat on any named storm. And the reason why is because right right now we've got a boat that damaged our docks and it is, I mean, it, it's not a, a safe issue. It's it's secure and all that. But going back and forth across that dock right now, which is going to be a minimum of another month or so before we can get it repaired, I just I just don't like it. I mean, um, Ooh, what's our kept, average of boats being left in there that you saw through this last storm? There was 23 boats left oh, in no. during during this last storm. Um, and there's been a few more than that on the storms before. Um, this storm, even though it was lesser of a storm than we've seen before, there was more damage on this mm -hmm. one because of number one, people weren't around here. Number two, their boats were not tied up proper, and uh, the the storm surge, the storm surge, yeah. and uh, we didn't. You know, we were extremely lucky. Okay, the storm surge hit at low tide, and at low tide, I I was down there. We had roughly a five foot surge here. I mean, that's just, that's my guesstimates. And that put water up to and then Pennsylvania Avenue in the parking area right there and just ready to go into the grass on the other side. If that would have hit at high tide, there would have been a lot of boats sunk in there. So, um, and, and a lot more damage done to our marina. And I just, I don't understand how anybody leaves their boat in when a storm's coming like that. I know some of them have to because they don't have trailers, but uh, I, I wouldn't even come close to sleeping if my boat was sitting there like that. And where would we store these boats if it was up to us to take? It's not them? up to us; it's up to them <laughs> to figure out where to store their boats. If we were trying, to, if we were going to get a trailer and do and, that, and I, I, I have talked to Innovation Marine. Um, they are willing to remove boats um, and store them on their lots. Um, so. I think it's a it's a good option, and it it it's going to make our marina a lot better. Um, it's it's definitely hard on a few people, but I'm sorry. I, How would innovation take them out? They've got they've got trailers that they can yeah. use. Um, some they can store them on the trailers. Some they can um, block them up. Block them up. Put them on blocks. Um, but yeah, and people have to prepare for that, and there'll be a charge for that. But do you have any idea what that charge would be? It's no, going to be, I mean, no. it's going to be per boat and it's, and it's between the person and innovation Marine. Okay. Yeah. How many boats do we have where the uh, owner is not physically in the park uh, year round? Well, that's, that's a whole nother issue that um, is kind of addressed in this. And uh, one, one of the boats that sank, uh, the person went home and anticipated that their bilge pump would run all summer. And when I found that out and I explained to him that if we would have had the rain that we had on a normal summer here, um, his boat would have been sunk a month after, after he left. Mm -hmm. And um, so if, if you're going to leave your boat in the marina and go home, have somebody watch over it. I mean, you, you got to. I mean, you just you can't leave these boats set there and think they're going to be there when you get back. Do we need to think about in the... Uh... In the arrangements for the rental of the lots, do you have a secondary or an emergency contact, or do we have that? I, like it, we do? It, it's in here. It, it's in there, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, no, was, Duane? Oh, yes. Uh, on number 26, are you then adding to, at the end of the paragraph, uh, recommend vessel removal prior to any named storm? Well, I get what I... What we're trying to do is you make it mandatory or a recommendation. And I'm, I'm not sure how to do it because, okay. I mean, uh, there's a lot of named storms, but not a lot of named storms heading this way. So you would have to have it as to where you mm -hmm. could specify this named storm, boats have to be removed. Um, I mean, if, and again, if, if a storm's heading this way, that's the only time you would want to do it. One's heading to Texas or whatever, then no, we don't have to remove them. Mr. Chair, please. May I? You actually have this covered in 25. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, severe weather and other emergencies, lessor expects lessee to have made suitable arrangements for safe sheltered anchorage during severe weather, including but not limited to tropical storms or hurricanes. Yeah. And it says, and lessee warns uh, such arrangements have or will be made. So I think you're covered well under that under that paragraph. Okay. I don't see how you can make it mandatory. Mandatory. I don't think I don't, you made it mandatory. But I don't see how it's enforceable. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I mean, even further, I hadn't even thought of what you said about how do you determine what's close enough to say right. okay, they got to go. That's the biggest. That's the biggest yeah. that I, that I see. Well, if we're covered under 25, there's no need to amend uh, uh, paragraph 26 on any recommendation or even mandatory. Right. The other thing I, that I wanted to add, too, is that the uh, as uh, Trustee Lombardi has said, the one, the one boat that caused the damage uh, in the marina this time the damage is, is approaching quickly $25,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So you do not want to leave your boat in there right. during a storm because I'm not so sure this guy's going to be able to get insurance next time when they finally pay us out. So, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Do, uh, do we want to consider saying you can't leave your boat in the marina all year if you're not here all year? Mm. I, I mean, no, no, no. I, I kind of you, you, how are you going to police that? You know, yeah. if, if you got somebody covering, if you got somebody covering and watching over your boat mm -hmm. that understands boats, I mean, and I'm, I'm almost always available. If, if people need help tying their boat up or how to tie it up proper, um, you know, I'll be glad to go down there and educate them. I, I have no issues with that. I that's mean, 24 I'm, hours a day. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, I will, I mean, I'll go out of my way to help you guys get these boats secured in the, in the slips properly. And, um, you know, it's just, it, 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 it I, I, it's, there was one this weekend. I had to go down and retie it. It's caught on a dock and then one this morning again. Um, I, I'm sorry. It just gets pretty frustrating that, you know, you edu try to educate the people and then they, they do it once. And the next time you come back, then it's all, all gone. But you just gotta you, just, you gotta learn to tie your boats up. I'll 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 educate everyone individually if I need to. And we tie something in like you've got the Coast Guard training coming up. That's that is the, the, that is coming wonderful. up in January. I haven't got flyers printed or made or anything yet, but yes, January uh, boat boat safety. Um, then uh, February is the uh, the um, emergency captain class, and then uh, in uh, March, it's going to be the uh, GPS, how to use your GPS. Also in January is the vessel safety checks. I highly recommend everybody down there gets that done and, and attends the classes. Okay, so everything that I'm seeing nope. here is all we're going to do Wayne. is. Yes. I, I have some, when it's, when it's my turn and it's appropriate, I have some questions about the, the lease. Okay, go ahead. Okay. First off, on the top of page one, why are there two dates and slips? Uh, just in case uh, one person has a boat and all of a sudden they want to, if we have space in the 20-footers, they can also put a jet ski or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, because everything else in the document is singular. Mm -hmm. And um, I would think, because it says vessel description, so if I have a boat in there with a description it's a it's a 24 foot whatever and you know the vessel name and now i'm going to get a slip for a jet ski i would think i need a separate lease for the jet ski because now the vessel description doesn't match i my vessel description on this document says that it's a 24 foot whatever and um so I, i'm not gonna... sure i well i was going to be one of the things i was going to bring up also because i do have several people down there that have uh, more than one boat registered in the slip and i've always told them as long as everything is registered in the office with you know to that slip then it's then it's all right mr chair may i so please they all they need to do in this case is just add another page one and everything else stays the same that's mm -hmm. the way i looked at it too so 
So um, just adding another page one with the description of the other vessel is fine, but we don't need to have two separate contracts, I think is what I'm trying Churchill. to get at. You're not talking okay. about two slips, you're talking about one slip one that slip. somebody might have one of two boats in it. Right, okay. one slip with two different boats. Okay. There's, I've, I have multiple people that okay. are that way. Does that cover that, Lori? Yeah, that, that, would, that would help take care of that. Um, another recommendation is uh, the page numbering. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a strong supporter of page one of seven, page two of seven, or wh how, whatever the magic numbers are, just so that there's a something that signifies the end of the document. So I'd okay. I, I would recommend seeing that changed. Then on page two, I've got some questions that's confusing to me. Um, item B and D for both the annual and, and seasonal. Can you fix, tell, tell me again what that what that means? Because if if in B I go to a thirty I go to a um wait a second. After the initial one year term, the the agreement can be okay, never mind. One it's has funny. nothing to do with the other. It's me. Yep, it's me. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, well, when I, I went back and read it to to explain my issue, I I saw what I didn't see the first time I read it. All right, then the last the last thing I have is on page eight, um, just above the in witness, there's the uh, by signature below, the undersigned affirms that has personally obtained sufficient insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was covered under number 18, where it goes into great detail what's needed for insurance. That's on page six. Um, so I'm wondering why we even have that statement there, because when they sign this, they're attesting to everything in this. I'm sorry, I just got lost. Well, it, on page eight. Okay. Page eight, just above the in witness, you've got by signature below, yeah. the undersigned Lisi affirms that he, she has personally obtained sufficient insurance. Okay. But if you go back to page six, there's a great big long okay. paragraph, number 18, right. on insurance that explains what the, they have to have 100,000, 100, 300,000. And so I'm, I'm thinking that this little paragraph above the signature doesn't sufficiently cover the insurance and is kind of redundant because they're affirming everything in the in the contract. So they would be affirming number 18 insurance. Sure, I, I, I well, can see well, that, but- Mr. Chair, may I, I'm sorry. So, so this is kind of uh, in the last five or 10 years been more of a, of a contract change that we've seen a lot. So even though it says that they'll maintain the specific insurance, in the in the number, I'm sorry, I don't. What number 18, is it, Lori? 18. 18. Number eighteen. They're just reaffirming uh, when they sign this thing that that they actually do have that insurance, and it's reminding them that they do. So when it, if it ever gets to the court and the guy says, "Well, you didn't tell me," it was in the boilerplate. Right. Well, no, we told you not only in the boilerplate, but we asked you before you signed that you have sufficient insurance. And right now, right. insurance is probably the most important thing that we need because, I mean, obviously, that marina is worth, you know, millions of dollars to us. And if things happen to it, we need to have it repaired. And what Trustee right. Lombardi and I are finding out that just to get a dock company to mobilize in the marina is 15 grand to bring in their equipment. So insurance is the right. most important thing that we can have and we're we're asking twice like telling okay. tether right? yes yes, yes yes a lot of times they that, say that hey, makes yeah yeah okay that makes perfect sense thank you i had one more point i wanted to make about this lease is currently we are not making people resign leases are you on am i on You'd... okay okay um so when we come to the office and just renew the slip, we don't sign a new lease. This should be signed mm -hmm. new every year. I agree. Um, same for the storage lot. Mm -hmm. So every time you every time you renew it, it lease should be re-signed. But currently, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. 
So where would you like that? It doesn't have to be in here. It just it's a process that has to happen. No. Okay. Whenever whenever we send well, out okay, the whenever, billing, you do it when a new lease should, sends itself, a new lease should be, be, be redone. Procedure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't need to be in here. It just needs to be it needs mm -hmm. to happen. Um doesn't it say it automatically I think renews? It automatically it, renews. It does automatically renew. Under under A on page two mm -hmm. on both the annual and seasonal, it automatically renews on each anniversary date. All right, so are we going to send this out to everybody and have them sign a new lease? We're, we're going to have to, yes. Initially, we're going to have to make them all sign the new lease. Yes. Yeah, but if it automatically renews, do no. have to say? Going, going from the old trailer estates lease to the new trailer estates mm -hmm. lease. We're going to have to have everybody sign the lease at their, at, are we going to do it now or are we just going to wait till their well, that uh, was my next question. anniversary day? Renew? No, I, I would like to do it now since we're sending out all the invoices for the month of then we'll November Then now. we'll do a mailing to everybody. We're, we're not talking about, we're talking about 115. It's 119. 119, so we're not talking about anything. But yes, it's an auto renew. So you don't need to have them uh, sign them every year, but uh, we need to get them signed initially. So we'll do that. Okay. Any other discussion? Wait, yeah. Is it possible when you invoice to have them affirm that they still have insurance when they pay the invoice? To have a statement on the, on the invoice that says, yes, I still have an uh, insurance policy in force. Is it worth it? I don't. I don't know if it's worth it. I do. I do. I, I think I they do. should. I do too. You have to bring your register. You got to bring your new registration in yeah. and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I think after going through the last tropical system that we had and all the damage, yes. Yeah. Well, the reason I say that it is it worth it is because the auto renewal says that you're going to have insurance in, in, in number 18 at all times. You're not required to have boat insurance to have a boat. Auto insurance you are. Yeah, you no. don't have to insure your boat. No. It's liability. No, it, you do have to insure your boat. 103,000. Yeah, according, but, according they, to our lease, you do have to have insurance at all times. Right, but you're, you're, just having registration doesn't mean you have insurance on your boat. I get that, but what I'm saying is, that putting it on the invoice is is in, in and if they don't have it or if they if if they say no, it's in violation of the a lease, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But we don't know that until we have a problem. So do you demand? Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying because it's the auto renewal. Exactly. Having them having them know. re. Uh, uh, I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We don't we'll know. do that on the invoice. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Do they have to? bring their stuff to the office every year registration yep. they do yeah okay we do track all that okay can can we ask for insurance at the same time we're asking for registration we should yes i believe i believe we do well on due dates i'll have to check on that i don't know we track insurance i know we track registration but i haven't seen anything tracking insurance Sounds, sounds to me like we need to track both. I'm sorry, Lori, I didn't hear that. I said it seems to me like we need to track both. On renewal. All right, we'll work on that. Oh, are you just going to do it on the invoice or don't need to change something here? On the invoice, on nothing here. Okay, yep. nothing here. Okay, any other discussion? So just to sum it up, all we're going to do is uh, take out the last sentence in paragraph eight, or I'm sorry, or uh, item eight. The rest of it is going to stay the same. No, you're going to fix the page numbers, please. Oh, and the page numbers. Yep. And then were we going to remove that second vessel on the top of page one because we were going to do uh, a new page one if there was a multiple uh, a multiple vessel? No, I thought, we were just, I thought we were just going to run a second uh, first page and attach it to the same lease. Or, yeah, lease. I, I say leave it. The circumstances are going to be the same. Yeah, because there's... But that's that's fine. I'm I, I'm good. I'm The attorney approved it, so who am I? <laughs> You're a board member. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, we'll make those changes uh, for the board. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the uh, replace PP46, which is also myself. Um, I went through and took a look at our rules and regulations when we separated the uh, lease from the rules. Uh, I pretty much copied a lot of that. If I can find it. Uh, I like your big bold print. <clears throat> there it is. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I didn't have a real lot of comment on this thing because I thought we pretty much covered everything that we had in our previous rules and regulations. Do I have any comments on those? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dwayne, yeah. one, one question I have is on item H. Does lessee is responsible for securing of boats, especially during hurricanes? Do we want to add a statement there that says, Trailer Estates recommends boats be removed during approaching hurricanes instead of just securing. Yeah. Just to reiterate what's in the lease. What I, oh. We didn't have it in. Bad when it's in two or three position places. We can, but I, I, I for some reason, I'm saying no to myself that I don't want to do that. If, if it's in the lease, the person who has a boat in the marina has has the the information in the lease. Um, I kind of looked at this use of facilities. The marina was both for not only people who had vessels in the marina, but also um, I as a resident. Um, such as D fishing is, is permitted in designated areas only. Netting and netting and crabbing is not permitted anywhere in or around the marina. That's not only to vessels. That's people who have vessels. That's to me as a resident. I can't go down there and do that. So I don't think the removing of for the hurricane is necessary here because when you have a vessel, you've got the lease and it's in the lease. Okay. I yeah. just was. Considering if it was a chance to reiterate it. And one other thing too is uh, uh, I want to thank Lori for catching my Thanks. word processing. I'm just not up to snuff on some of that. She did straighten it out for me. And I, I, and I apologize that I wasn't available uh, the morning to get that done. Um, I was in an apple orchard with my grandson. That was nice, but yep. Thank you for catching my my number in the pay. Uh, thank you for doing uh, it. I have one other question for you. I'll close it. Mm -hmm. um, it says fishing in designated air, areas. Are they? Are they? Is there signage to say where you can fish and where you can't? Yeah, mm -hmm. there was signage. Yeah. Yeah. It, it the signage says basically that residents can fish there. Okay. Re it's for residents. Non I've thrown other people out of that are non-residents. With with the exception of innovations boundaries, they can't be fishing off of those. Sign there. There's no sign for that. There's no I, sign now. There was. Yeah, there was. You know, I think innovations put them up. Uh, I'll have to look. I'll have to look because I don't remember seeing a sign down ramp. there. Am I got down during the during the seawall process and not back up? I'm guessing. But okay. One yeah. one thing I got on it is yeah. um, I is almost duplicate to see it in the uh, marina rules and regulations section there. The first first section. And it's mm. okay. about the boat ramps are open. Yeah, and then you babysit your phone. No, nope, there was something that I changed in that. All right, so I'm trying to understand what why there's a difference there. I'm sorry, help me out. I got I'm oh, slightly confused. What are we I, I, what are we meeting up? Item C. And then item or article I are almost duplicates. 
but what did I change? Then, uh, the I, doc, I think, I the think doc I master has a key yeah. in case of emergency. It was the doc master that had that. Um, yeah, on item C, I, it was. I'm it, not. Uh, which version are we looking at? Because my C says the boat ramp is open from. And my eye says, Lisi agrees that in case of emergency, the district may move the boat to any other docking space. So those are two different things. Well, the lettering on mine is kind well, of screwed up too, the way I, I see I, it. Yep. It's an email that sent out uh, that changed all that. Well, I guess oh. I didn't get that then. This one. Okay, was... so the, yeah. the one, all right, item C that you're questioning starts with the boat ramp is open. Is that mm -hmm. true, Todd? Yep. Correct. Okay. Yes. What does what does your eye start with? The gate to the ramp is open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah, that's L on the new corrected one. Yeah. Okay. You got apparently, old, I don't have the right one. You got the old one there. Okay. New one's nice and big bold letters. Uh, that's the, this is what's in my packet. So okay. I I agree. It's a it's a duplicate. We need to get rid of L. Mm -hmm. Probably. Is that the one you want gone, Dwayne? Oh, okay. Um, the gate is the no. Gate. Does it correct the lettering that's in here too? Yeah, it corrected no, all the lettering. Okay. All right. The boat ramp, the <clears> gate <throat> to the ramp. And I don't right. think I brought the corrected Please one back. The ramp. Is it? Is your copy of the correct one? It is the same thing. That's what I'm saying. It's the same thing. It's yeah, a little identical. bit different wording, but That's it's same. the same information. The only difference is someone says the dock master can be contacted. Mm -hmm. Everyone says he has a key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's what I felt. It was the same thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And this is so if you want one to go, Dwayne, which one do you want, C or L? Oh, there it is. I do have it. Uh, just looking, I think we can go ahead and take I out. One with the key. The one with the key. All right, so you want L removed. That's actually L. L, yeah. Mm -hmm. L, okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Mm -mm. Did we cover it pretty much? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. With that, we'll move on to the uh, north fence replacement. Todd? All right, let me. Let me get to it here. All right, we've talked about this before. Um, we did get the survey done, and uh, we do have a, a few properties that are that border ours that have sheds on our properties and fence on our property line. All right, so we're going to have to deal with that um, if we decide to go ahead and replace this fence. Um, the back fence is in bad, bad shape. I mean, the last storm pretty much finished it off. There's probably, I'm going to say a third of it that's leaning over. Um, some of the other people's fences are leaning onto ours. We've gone down there and we've temporaried it back up. So we really need to do something with it, whether you just take it out or or what. So any questions on it? I mean, Were you able to determine... Um, this stopping and starting point on the north uh, west gate from um, the survey. Yes, they. I don't know exactly where it's at yet because we haven't been down there. Um, I'm actually going to meet with BMB Fence and all that Wednesday, and uh, I thought the survey company was going to stake it, but they didn't. So we will determine that from the survey. So the low bid is 83.5. Correct. Um, and these are outdated too. The other guys actually are higher than that now. P and B held their price. Um, 
And then on this uh, quote summary I put together here, the surveying actually came in at 3,500, I believe it was, um, am I correctly? Yes. So that's actually a thousand less. So this is gonna entail taking out the full north fence, chain link fence. Correct. Letters have to be sent for that two foot uh, no man's land to take out the old palm trees put in the new there isn't really a two fence. foot there isn't actually no there's not a two between, foot between between our fence and the neighbor's fence from uh bay shore gardens there's a two foot strip that's just that they have moved our fence over yeah at some points there is at other points their fences are over onto our property line and so forth and there's telephone poles that are on both sides of the line and I okay mean, there's a lot of, of obstacles there so my question is is do we have to notify bayshore residents that we are putting a fence right next to theirs or in, i believe we that do. we're changing the, the property line by county rules you do okay it's there's, it's necessary to let them know for those people who don't have a fence and use our fence and for those people who have their property on our property right it goes both ways Mr. Chair. Yes. So there, there's also a few sheds that appear that go right through our property two, line also. Two, two yep. sheds that are on our yep. property yep. and uh, two fences that I've seen that are and on I, our property. And I think the proper way to do this is not to uh, notify the homeowners directly at first, but it probably is going to be to notify Bayshore Gardens, the district. District. First, let them know what our plans are and then follow it up uh, after they have a chance. and. Um, I don't mind doing it. It's just a matter of realizing that it may take a little bit extra time. Under, understood. Okay. And B and B, I talked to them. They are willing to do you know, sections. So if we have a section where there's a problem, they'll mm -hmm. do one section, skip that, go to another, and and so forth. And then, if I may, also, you know, I I always worry about white PVC and down in Florida. Because like this guy across the street that finally cleaned off his fence with that mold and mildew and everything that was on it, is that it's going to not only require to be uh, uh, washed by us on, I'm not, I, I know for sure on our side, but I'm not so sure on the other side, but also that when we weed whip it, um, you know, we're responsible for if we break the PVC or whatever and that kind of thing, and after a storm, obviously, to make any repairs. I just want to make sure we're all in on this and we understand that. Yeah, the thing is, too, I mean, if we go to chain link, we still have the cleanup issues because of the weeds growing in it and they everything. Don't have and the mold on the fence. Maintenance-wise from a PVC fence, I think, would be significantly easier than maintaining a... We've got, we've got the PVC fence now around the end of Tennessee down there, and um, I don't know. We probably haven't cleaned that in two years now, I'm guessing. It still looks pretty Three. decent. Three years now, has it been? So, yeah. And the one that's broken. And There is one that's broken, yes, where it got hit with a lawnmower. And <laughs> nobody knows who did it. So, Homeless. Yeah, homeless guy on a lawnmower hit it. Wayne, the, uh, I want to comment that, that the budget for the fence uh, from the 2023-2024 budget is 90000 So this is within budget. And then I had I had one other comment. Is the nine thousand dollars for clearing is that by our guys or is it a subcontractor? Uh B and B fence has actually got their own landscaper to come in and take it out. I'm gonna meet with them Wednesday as long as if this passes, I'll meet with them all Wednesday and we're gonna go over the, the whole thing. So will they have one of those pieces of equipment that has the that you see going through the like a swell that cuts everything in its path down? I don't know what they have yet at this point. He just said they will take it all out. I mean, there's there's some pretty big trees in there yeah. that yeah. will need to come out. Brush, whatever they call it. The, okay. Bush hogs. I'll find out Wednesday exactly what they, they said they'll do. And this PVC, the fence, uh, they have two, you have the, the 1776 six foot, and you have a 1776 six by six. 
One's a SB PVC and the other standard. Uh, explain the differences there. What, back, you're back on the uh, quote? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know one is all right. More so of a one one is the shadow box type because uh, when it was originally quoted, it it was a regular standard, you know, six foot fence, and then they were, they quoted shadow box also to what they were asked to quote. Then I just I picked up what was there and just left that stuff the same. Asked them to update the original quotes. That's why it was put in there that way. So shadow box gives you a different look, basically, and so, strength or anything like that. Uh, they said that they're both about the same. They're both rated well, the same. So this one is not shadow box that we're correct. In. This is not shadow box. So that'll stop the weeds from going in between because shadow box has is porous. Right. So you don't want that shadow box, right? right. Or else you'll be maintaining it. Mm -hmm. Some additional eleven thousand bucks too. Right. It's all. It was more money also. It'll be six foot all the way along until we get up to the north end. Correct. Sorry, the east end, that'll be an eight foot. So houses along Tennessee down there will have eight foot to block out rice's noise and, well, assist in blocking out noise and, <laughs> and yeah. lights from, from the rice's area. I didn't believe we needed it at first. And then I went down there and spent a morning down there and the yeah. trucks back there shining lights right in the houses and all that. It's pretty, I feel bad for those people. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, but that will close and go on to the uh, stage curtain replacement. Todd? So we talked about this before also. Um, there's two different quotes here. One for, and I, again, I keep telling we don't pay tax, but he keeps putting it on here. So I'll just do it with this and then we'll take care of that one when we get to it. Um, so the grand total for the first one was 14, 1, 18, 65. And what that is, is that's replacing the curtain that goes all the way around the back and up the sides and just the two valances that are up top. Um, what was up there, and that's currently what's up there right now. What was up there was it had two draw curtains across, one across the front and then one back about, uh, I don't know, feet back mm -hmm. plus. The, the stuff that's quoted here. And that's the second quote would be to, re to replace all of that, which is roughly $27,000. Um, when we did the large hall remodel, I pulled down the two sliding curtains that slid back and forth. And um, everybody seems to like what's up there now. So I think we saved the $12,000 and go with the, mm -hmm. the $14,000 one. And Unless that, anybody objects. Is that also beneficial for our AC and everything not to have those curtains? Um, right there? Does it allow it to stay cooler up there without the curtains? I don't know if it makes a difference or not. I honestly don't. I, I do. I've been up there and, and it gets pretty hot back there unless you have the kitchen AC and the stage AC turned on. But with it open, you're actually cooling it with the large hall and, and that the that air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard okay. and then it can cool the air, the kitchen down easier. So it does make a difference. So that's a benefit for us not to do that. Right. But um, everybody's used it so far. I mean, it hasn't been that many since we've had it down, but they seem to like what's up there now. A um, lot simpler, a lot easier to deal with. Well, the thing is, I mean, if we go with the less expensive route, if it comes a need to add the second curtain, that's a possibility, right? Yeah, you could always go back and do that. So, I mean, I think I, I would agree to go with the less expensive. And with our type of entertainment, I mean, we don't get like plays and that kind of stuff. Right. That would need that kind of stuff. It's more the musical right. type stuff. So I don't see that as a as an issue. Right. This does include installing two new tracks and the whole works. That back track is... Uh, Pretty bad shape. Every time I pull the curtains back and forth, I wait for it to fall on the bed. So this is all the fireproof stuff. And yep. Everything this is all. These are all certified certified curtains. Okay. Um, I picked a color, but it'll will we'll surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> is Dwayne going to pick the color? No, I picked <laughs> I picked the color. I picked the color on this one. No, nope. so I'm staying out of that one. <laughs>
But I think it's about time. I think it's we're ready to get this thing approved and get it yes. installed. Get mm-hmm. this up. It, and it's still they they talk like they're four months out to even get them put up. So that'd be Christmas time, you know, before they even get put up. So that's good. Okay. Any other discussion? That said, the uh, last item there, and that's uh, the rescission of PP6, the trustee's protection policy. Uh, we're taking a look at that in the charter. Uh, the current charter uh, now covers the trustee's protection quite well under Section 21. You should have a copy of that section in there. And when I took a look at the uh, policies and procedures, it was just redundant. And the charter is the umbrella over all of our policies and procedures. So there was no need to have that policy in place. And what my recommendation is to is to just delete or rescind uh, PP6 altogether. All right. Now, Dwayne, you know you're going to need to do a motion at the next, a formal motion at a board meeting at our next board meeting to eliminate. Uh, PP6 if this flies. Got it. Okay. Yep, yep, there's no comments here. That's that's what I'll do at the uh, board meeting. But I think we're pretty well covered under the target requirements and there's some, uh, I was just informed this morning, there's some Florida statutes that all also has coverage. So if there's no objection, that will add it and go right on to the board meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's uh, do the informational report from the trustees. Rod, lead us okay. on. Uh, things have been going good. Uh, rode around with Lee again uh, last week, and we issued uh, some second uh, <clears throat> notices and some new notices. Um, the one thing I would like to, to comment on is that the people really need to start looking at their lawns. I and mean, we've got a lot of people coming back here the last week or so. So hopefully a lot of those yards will get, and get taken care of. Um, I noticed today driving around that people didn't realize that in October we go to a Thursday only garbage pickup because <laughs> there are a lot of cans out there. So people uh, be cognizant of that and uh, probably wouldn't hurt if you pulled them back off of the street until Thursday. Um, one thing too is that that if you see a problem, I encourage you to come and do a complaint form so that we can follow up on it appropriately and it's it's tracked. I mean, I know Russell and I both go around uh, and and keep an eye on things, and if we see things that are we think are uh, offenses, that we'll get them documented and get letters sent out. But uh, but if you see something that's a problem that uh, I mean, you may see rodents running in your yard, uh, that kind of thing. We did notice last week running around. We had some one trailer that had some trees on the roof, which is not good because uh, <laughs> the critters love to get up and jump around on that and cause issues. So, just uh, cognizant if you see, if you think there's an issue, it doesn't hurt to write up a short complaint, and we'll follow up and and respond on it. And that really helps. I think that'll help us to to do our job. That's it. Okay, Russell. The uh, violation summary that we receive um, about every week that records all of the violations in the park, which I believe now there's about 33 of them. Um, this is helping. Um, thank you, Lee, for the opportunity to bring something intelligent enough for us to keep here in the park for a long period of time to be able to help both uh, North and South trustees. Uh, do the job properly and make it much easier. And uh, I was going to comment on Rod. Uh, I don't ride around with Lee. Lee rides in the back of my golf cart because he keeps talking while I'm out there. So I have to, <laughs> I have to get him going. We know better than that. I, wanna, I wanna say something. I get all the way through with Rod, no problem, in an hour, under an hour sometimes. Russell, we do half of this. <laughs> In an hour and a half, and then I say, uh, you know, and it, he tells me I talk too much. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that happens. Not sure, but sir. but I do want to say to everybody, the people who have followed up since they've gotten the letter from the uh, violations, 
it's very nice to see people doing things. If anybody doesn't think it doesn't work, go by and look at 6622 Marina, and you'll see one of the problem childs that have been here for a long time that's been under probate and hasn't been able to get anything done. There are a lot of people who are paying attention to the letters they're getting now. This is a whole new system. This makes Rod and I's life a lot better, mm -hmm. and it actually makes the job more enjoyable. So thank you, Lee, for bringing this to us and, uh, and all the trustees that voted for it in order to for us to implement it and be able to use it. Thank you, because you just made particularly that job duty very a lot more enjoyable. And people seem to be a little happier about knowing that the next thing that they get will be a fine. So they end up cleaning their property. So it must make them a little more happier. Uh, that's that's pretty much all. Lee, thank you uh, once again for you, for bringing that to us and the public and the trustees on our thankless end of the job for agreeing to get it. Yeah. What's the heat map? What's uh, that all that's, about? That's in case we can't find you. That the heat map goes on there and we locate you. So if you're close to your trailer, we can go ahead and get a hold of you. Well, we'll dis <laughs> we'll discuss this. Uh, there's actually a uh, I put a violation report in there. Right. Mm -hmm. it's it's, but it's after the uh, trustee reports. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, Todd. All right. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, our maintenance crew and their their time off. Um, I know I value their time off and they value their time off. And after hours, if we have issues, call me first. Nine times out of 10, I can run down and take mm -hmm. care of something real quick and uh, let these guys have their peace at, in, at mm -hmm. nights. Um, I'm a trustee, so I'm not, it doesn't matter on my piece, <laughs> but I'm, I'm more than willing to, to help out where I can and, and where I, where I can't, then I'll get a hold of one of the guys and we'll get them in here and, and get the stuff taken care of. So yeah, please call, call me first. And then, um, we'll go to our maintenance guys, let them have their, their time off. Um, they work really hard here during the day and, uh, I, I value their time off and, and so do they. Um, second thing is, uh, I, I, since I've been working them so hard, um, they've been having so many big projects, they've fallen behind on a few things. So you're going to be seeing um, a lot more of the uh, you know, activities we get in the summer done now. So you're going to be seeing like the activity center. Um, some rooms are going to get closed in there because we're going to be stripping and waxing. Um, also, the uh, weight room is going to get closed on Thursday this week. We're going to try to address the... Uh, problem we've had forever on the uh lights getting water in them and and the, the condensation issues with the uh ceiling tiles so we're going to address that stuff and hopefully maybe this time it'll it'll actually get fixed and we brought in professional people to try to do it and things will work but made it better but not not fixed so we're going to try to fix it this time so all in all you know there's gonna be pressure washing around the park and, and and catching up on a lot of things that the projects have not allowed us to do over the summer so Getting it ready for everybody coming back. Todd, I know I know a lot of people, <clears throat> you're not around to see everything all the time. And, right. and the maintenance uh, crew doesn't live here. They don't see a lot of things. So people contacting you with things they notice and everything, is uh, is that helpful to you at all? It is. And it's, it's I mean, I, I appreciate all the stuff because we don't, we don't catch everything for sure. And I do appreciate people doing it. And, uh, you know, another avenue is the same thing. What Rod talked about was the complaint form. Um, and it's not really considered a complaint. It's just if you, if you see something broke or needs addressed, <clears throat> stop at the office, fill out the form. And then we got, you know, we got it and, and we'll get to it. Um, I try to follow up on everything, but, you know, sometimes uh, life gets in the way. Okay. But, uh, sometimes it may not get the priority that somebody thinks it needs, but we will get to it. And just an additional comment on that complaint form is it's better to put it in writing. That way we get it in the public record oh. and we can follow up on it. A phone call is not going to get handled quickly. So better to have you explain it. So if there's an issue with it, we can come talk to you about mm -hmm. what that issue is and, yep. and do that. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the uh... Fish house is, uh, we passed our final inspection on that. So it's all good. Um, the tables are in there. So we still do have to get some electric and water and all that stuff established. So it'll be 
ready to operate hopefully here soon. Um, doesn't have a high priority at the moment, but you can go in there and clean fish if you really needed to. Just have to use regular knives, not electric. And have to drag water hose in from outside. So, all right. Great. Kathy? Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I'll do the health and welfare report. Um, thank you to everyone who shared information with me about residents who need get well cards or those residents who have passed on. Um, please know that we have to verify that this really did happen before we post it on the board. Um, that would not be good if we didn't verify it and it was misinformation. Um, so just please be aware of that. If you can send me any information about the person, any contact information would also be great. Uh, the health fair contract has been signed, so thank you very much. Um, the health fair is scheduled for February 29th, 2024. That's really hard to say. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions about the health fair, you can get a hold of me or hopefully the person who's going to be following me. Um, hint, hint. Um, under seasonal rec, um, the first event of the seasonal calendar will be a dinner and a movie on Thursday, November 9th in the large hall. Um, we're planning on having a big potato bar that I'm going to be doing. So please give me a good, because I hope I won't blow up the kitchen in the process of doing it. Never operated the oven before. Um, and we'll have dessert followed by a movie, which will be announced on 732 and on flyers in different safe areas. Um, could you help with that event? So if you want to help me do all that, just contact me. Um, look for flyers on the event as well. Uh, the first dance of the season is Saturday, November 25th. Happy Days Band will be back. Um, so. I'm looking for clubs and groups and individuals who would like to adopt a dance for this season. We only have 10 scheduled Saturday night dances this year. And the reason why the number is down is because of a lack of attendance by our residents from last two seasons. We made the decision to not have as many dances, to look at different types of recreation instead. So if your club or group would be interested in adopting a dance, this is what you're asked to do. You man the doors because fobs are activated, which means you have to have your fob to get into the doors. Only non-residents won't have fobs. So please bring your fobs. Um, you'll have to have also your current park ID. This is required now. This is, we did this last year. This is nothing different. Um, if you forgot why we did this, I'll be happy to tell you that we had a an event that happened during the showtime last January. And after that event, we decided as a board to make this very official. It's for our safety. It really is. So bring your fops. Have your park IDs. They're going to be checked this time. So volunteers are going to be asked to to man the doors for non-residents to get in for the dances and to check IDs and take money. And then at the end of the dance, you're going to be asked to help clean up. We wipe down tables and do all of that. Um, it really helps for everyone to get out in a decent hour because it's it's a long, and these events are long. So if you want to sign up right now, I have nobody on. So please let me know. Your volunteering is really most appreciated. Um, the monthly district rec calendar will begin in November. I will get with Cindy. I know there's a potluck on the schedule and a coffee break on the schedule. So I will get with her to get the dates of when she's going to sell tickets for coffee break. This will be passed out in bingo beginning in November and also on bulletin board. So you'll have the entire district rec calendar and one sheet of paper, so you'll know what's going on district wide. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about the movie licenses because after the last board meeting, um, social media was quite active about it. So I wanted to explain about what was said and what was not said. 
the MPL MPLC license will not will not be reissued. It will expire on 12-31-2023. They've already been notified. We've received back that they know that we're not going to reissue it. With that said, we never said we weren't going to show movies. We are in the process of looking at two other licensing companies, Swank and Criterion. I've called them both. They are they're limited in scope at what they what they will license, but that means that we can still have movies. Um, the cost of licensing is expensive because all of these movies have a copyright. If we ever rented a movie, there's a little copyright thing that goes across the screen. Everyone kind of ignores it. Well, that's a that's a real thing, and. Mine is showing a movie in the privacy of your own home or on your own property. You have to have a movie license or you're violating copyright law. And we have to have that here. That's just all there is to it. So we are looking at options. We're also looking at renting out a movie theater. The AMC Theater on 53rd Street, Lee's contacted them. So no one is no one's taking away activities, especially for summer. That will not happen. There may be different activities. Um, and if you have ideas on things that, besides seeing a movie that we could do, let Cindy and I know, because this is important. Um, but so this is why we decided to do this, because the cost of it. And believe me, both Lee and I called MPLC and really tried to negotiate a lower price license. And they won't budge. Nothing. The other licensing companies will give you a break if you do like 10 movies or a bundle. They will give you a break. But it's hundreds of dollars to license one movie because they have to pay the production company who pays the people who did the movie. It's it's all what it is. And so, so let us know. Be happy to do whatever you want to do. So thank you. Lewis? Um, most of our time last week was spent finalizing the insurance and that's now completed. Moving ahead, the next uh, things on our agenda are uh, preparing for year end, finalizing our, our year end documents and getting ready for the audit. And uh, one of the things I wanna focus on um, is our accounts that we make sure we track our projects. I mean, we tried to try to identify the cost that we spent on the big hall and we have to do some manual work. And I wanna make sure that things like the fence and other capital projects like that, we track them separately and make the reporting easier and more accurate. And that's about all I got for now. Great, Lori. Uh, give me just a second. I have to catch up with what, what Louie was saying. Um, thank you. Uh, I the only thing I really have to report is that I made a an administrative correction to PP32 the complaint form slash procedure um, on the bottom of page three it had areas of responsibility we had changed those areas back in April I believe it was and I never got it forwarded on to the PP32 so now the areas of responsibility says North trustee. Uh, north of Indiana, South Trustee, South of Indiana. That's all I've got. Great, thank you. Did I miss anybody other than me? Cindy, but Cindy, and she's not on. Okay, uh, the Board of Trustees vacant position seat nine closed on September 29th. Uh, I, 29th? Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday. Uh, we did receive one applicant. That's Dottie Deerwester. We will start setting up the interviews for the October 16th meeting. So go ahead and prepare your questions again. Uh, if you're desiring to run for the Board of Trustees, your uh, paperwork has to be into the Manatee County elections by October 5th. Uh, the other item that I had here is uh, there was some language or talk on the uh, Facebook. Uh, I got in touch with the Manatee County uh, elections. Uh, they have a 
uh, whole setup on on their website on the voter by mail. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read just some highlights of this and just says over the past 20 years, uh, voting by mail has become popular. Uh, it's the best way to cast your vote. Uh, however, that process changed uh, in 2021, the Florida legislation passed SB 90, which limits the duration of your request for vote by mail ballots to all elections through the end of the calendar year. And now what they are doing is uh, you have to register every year. Mm -hmm. um, no, is that right? Uh, all vote by mail that local elections office around the state had re, uh, had on re, on record expired 2022. Now the voters will need to make a new request to receive the voter by mail for the October. I'm sorry for the 2024 uh, general elections every two years. So it's on their website. Uh, you can call them. Uh, if they also have. Um, a mailing that's coming out here to all of the Manatee County register, registered voters. Uh, so it's well covered in there. But uh, the best way is just pick up the phone, call them, say, hey, I want to change my uh, voting by mail regulations. And the last thing I had, and I don't know if uh, park managers are going to cover, but we have the smoke detector uh, replacement coming up on October 15th. 14th. 14th. Uh, I still, I don't know if you've got a list of volunteers to. We still need volunteers. So if you would like, uh, I'm assuming they're going to have a pre-scheduled how to put the uh, smoke detectors up. So if you'd like to do that, help out, as well as take your uh, golf carts and run them around through the park, that would be nice. And did I change anything? Nope. I had a question about the fire alarm. Um, the subjects come up about uh, whether somebody can actually uh, let them in somebody else's house because they have keys. Is that going to be presentable? Uh, what, what I thought he made mention of that. If you, I believe it's okay. Access, I believe it, it's, it's okay. okay to do. Just wanted to verify. But that. I would suggest that if you have access to that person's house, as you fill out the paperwork that says. There's and then you take them to that. Correct. I, I wouldn't want to just walk in and change it. Right. No. Okay. Uh, um, Lee. Mark. Yes. Lee. Uh, <clears throat> our fire department used to help install, used to install uh, the smoke detectors. You might give uh, Cedar Hammock a call and find out if they might have a couple of. Uh, qualified individuals that could spend a few hours helping do installs. You might find some volunteers there. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Mr. Marsh, your park manager's uh, comments, please. No, we've got violation report. Could we could we talk briefly about the violation summary? No. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so this is something that's going to be a uh, once a month uh, um, occurrence. It's just to update the uh, the residents and the board members about where we're writing violations, which violations. Some of them still may be open. Some of them have been closed. Uh, and your question, uh, uh, Trustee Nichols, what the, what's what's going on with the heat map? I don't know, the, their chance of getting a, a pie chart into the, I don't know. It just shows where uh, there might be uh, more occurrences of we're writing violations, but I don't think it really has any rhyme or reason. No. Uh, it, it did go off when we went by your house <laughs> while you were gone. <laughs> Um, not even but, on here. <laughs> but the the interesting thing is is that uh, there we even though we've written quite a few, we've also been able to close quite a few. And uh, the process is is that we're not going out every week. We're going out every other week. And the first thing that we like to do is to go out with a list of one, ones that we have to checking to see if they we can close them, and then move on to. Uh, uh, writing uh, any new ones if uh, if required. 
or giving a little bit more time that's even listed in the uh, in the uh, letter to cure the violation. Um, some of the things that we're looking at and seeing quite a bit of is junk and clutter in carports um, and on in yards. Um, uh, these are things that uh, create what's called an unsightly appearance, which is in our deed restrictions. And uh, we're asking people that have a lot of junk and clutter in their carports to either clean them up, donate them, sell them, Facebook Marketplace, whatever they need to do to remove some of that stuff. But it can't, the things that should be in your house can't spill out into driveways and front yards and backyards, and side yards. You mean like their toilets? I said in their yard. Yeah, no comment on that one. That's for sure. Um, generally, if you pull a toilet out, it's not going to go back in, folks. Yeah. So you want to make a, a comment on the stones and weeds because that's one issue we're seeing a lot about. Absolutely. So we, uh, as has been said, is that there's a trustee, the North and South trustee, uh, and and I go out and we. We sometimes sound like an old married couple arguing over which properties we're going to write a violation on and what we're not. And a lot of times the issue is, is that the grass could be kept at a proper level, but there's a, a weed or two here, you know, that's sticking up, you know, uh, and it's getting tall. So it's getting to be, you know, eight inches a foot tall. So we'll usually say we'll wait till next, you know, next uh, period. But uh, when there's a lot of rain, like there has been recently, they, these weeds, these Florida weeds, man, they just take over. And yes, you're going to get a written violation if even if your yard is somewhat mowed and, you know, that these weeds are all sticking up, uh, sprouted all over the place. And uh, it just looks pretty bad as we go along. Is that what we were talking about? Well, I'm talking sure. about weeds in the stones. In oh, the stone. oh, yeah. The, the Florida the, weeds that grow in concrete. Yeah, the Florida yeah. weeds. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to say half of the violations we're writing right now are for crushed shell or or gravel. So people want to make their their homes a zero maintenance type of a uh, of a of a property. The problem is is that they're not spraying the weeds that are coming through the gravel or through the crushed shell, and uh, they have to be. And 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 when there's rain, you know, and and you spray the day before, and it rains, it may not be that you know getting these weeds. We we obviously aren't going to write somebody up that's trying, and we can see where the weeds are, you know, dying off or whatever. But there's a lot of property, especially some off of uh, Canada Street, that are um, horrible and that have more weeds and and vegetation in them than they do gravel. And yes, it's going to be a violation. So we ask that you uh, take a look at that. And once you get them under control, it's way easier to keep them under control than it is to just leave them and try to hit them every, you know, every two or three months. It's just very hard. The other option is to peel everything back and put down a, a weed barrier uh, or a bisqueen or heavy duty bisqueen to stop the uh, the weeds. But I'm not so sure the according to uh, uh, trustee uh, McAllister, the Florida weeds seem not find a way. <laughs> we want to let everybody know too. If you need your your neighbor's weeds sprayed or to kill their weeds, just uh, spray before the rain, and that'll help your neighbors a lot. The other issue that we we are coming into contact or uh, with is unregistered occupants. And uh, we are seeing people that are in homes that we don't have any paperwork or don't even, the person has uh, died some time ago uh, and there's somebody new and they are unregistered and the property owner is responsible for making sure that person has gone to the office and they've also authorized uh, them to be living there. And uh, unregistered occupants or even underage uh, will be written up through the through the violation process. That's it. Good. Um, we. Yes. I I I know that there was some tongue in cheek going on uh, with 
toilets in the front yard, but you might want to check with MCUD um, because if I replace an old toilet with a new toilet, they tell me to put it in the front yard until they clear it. And uh, and then they they give me a, I think it's a hundred dollar rebate towards my new toilet. That, that hasn't so been a problem. MCUD might be the culprit. Uh, what? Uh, that, that's not the issue. We've had several people have taken okay. them out, left them in their backyard and, and you know, they left. Okay. Forgot. Is that still in effect? Okay. Uh, well, no, I got $100? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, oh, you yeah. can do it through the county. Through the county? Yeah, they... For, for they a need lower... lower like using the lower volume... Well, they need your toilet. Toilet. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they basically need the yes. lid. All right, yeah. got it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We have no unfinished business. So with that, I will adjourn the meeting at... What time's your... Eleven oh. Did you do them? He, he, I thought you said you're done. Well, I'm sorry. I'm done with a violation report. I said, <laughs> <laughs> as much as I'd like to adjourn. Sorry. <laughs> That's uh, okay. I only have a couple of things. <laughs> the deadline for the fire uh, detector, smoke detectors, is Friday, uh, and we are filling up very quickly. So you probably should get them in as soon as possible. There's a chance where there may be a cutoff uh, earlier uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, as uh, we're looking for volunteers to uh, not only help install, but to drive the installers around from home to home. The, pro uh, the project goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, October 14th. So uh, we'll, we'll keep it limited to uh, just those four hours. Um, Happy new fiscal year. Uh, our new fiscal year started on Sunday, yesterday, October 1st. So uh, we're, we're working uh, with uh, the uh, treasurer to close out our old uh, fiscal year uh, and get ready for the audit. Um, I wanted to also bring in uh, up that we, many of you know that we're having trouble with our FOB systems. And especially over at the wood shop, where we believe that the reader over at the wood shop lost communication with our server. And I'm looking at a lineup outside right now for people to renew their fobs because we're only able to uh, renew them on one computer. Um, obviously, the board has been talking about for quite some time uh, and doing research on a new fob system that's sorely needed. Uh, and that uh, we will be ready to bring it to the October 16th board meeting for your perusal and discussion. So that's uh, that's moving along pretty well. And then lastly, uh, which has already been mentioned, we're moving forward with the dock and piling repairs uh, from the pontoon that damaged the marina during the uh, storm. Uh, and uh, we're just waiting on an adjuster from the uh, uh, owner's uh, insurance company, and he should be out hopefully this week or next week. So you'll probably see some activity there. And that's it, sir. Okay. Since we have no unfinished business, <laughs> 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 what time is it again? I'll adjourn this meeting at 11.04. And with that, I'd like to take a 10-minute recess, if we could. So if you would be back here by 11.20. Please turn off your mics.
Okay. You're uh, ticking. I'm sorry. You're a ticking. Under your seat. Oh, geez. Yes, it's. Yes. I'll push push the. Uh, it's the door. Door there. Uh, yeah. At the... Oh. Good here. I... Thank you. <clears throat> Still rattling. Just open up the door and just shut it again because I tried to use the access and I don't they think it in. clicked. Oh, uh, this thing. What the heck? Hit the handicap button. That would be an issue. Throw the switch off on it. Yeah, yeah. Fixed. Okay, now we resolve that problem. <laughs> okay, with that, a call to order the regular board meeting for October 2nd, 2023 at 1120 here in Marks Hall. Lori, would you please read the roll call again, please? Sure, Lori Dalton here via Zoom. Kathy Gregory. Present in the hall. Todd Lombardi. Present in the hall. Russell McAllister. Present in the hall. Louie Nichols. Present in the hall. Cindy O'Brien. Rod Smith. Present in the hall. Dwayne Trotter. Present in the hall. And Lee Morris. Present in the hall. Okay, before I go to public comment, uh, I would like to make a motion to amend the board uh, agenda items to include the revision of PP6, the uh, trustees protection policy. Could I have a second? I'll second that. Hang on, you got to slow down a second. I got to get, I got to get this verbatim. Motion to amend the agenda. The board agenda item. To item. include. Rescission of PP6, trustee protection policy. Rescission mm -hmm. of PP. Oh, rescission, not revision. Rescind. That's what I said. Rescission. That's what I said. Rescission of PP6, trustee what? Protection PP6. policy. Thank you. And it was seconded by Todd. Uh, and with that, we'll open it up to public comment. Oh, you need a, you oh, need a vote. Do we need to vote on that? I need a yes. vote. I'm sorry. I skipped right over that. Um, all those in favor of approving the uh, motion as stated, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. With that, we'll jump into public comment. Do I have anybody in the audience? Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Hearing none, I'll close public comment. We'll jump right into the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes for the September 18th, 2023 board meeting workshop? I'll make a motion to approve the board workshop meetings. I'll second the motion. Lewis seconded. Who is the second? Lewis? Louis? Okay. Yep. Are there any questions to those minutes? Yeah, I have one on I number did not... eight. Bell Lombardi, right? <laughs> not no, Lombardi. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you did send me those. I apologize. Give me just a second. I can catch up with that. And then uh, down in number seven, uh, Paperwork needs to needs to have their paperwork in the office by October fifth. It should be by the Board of Elections for election. by October fifth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You did send those to me. I apologize. I lost my mind. Are there any other changes or corrections? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes uh, as amended, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the September 18th, 2023 regular board meeting? I so move. That's Rod. 
I'll second it. Todd. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Minutes are approved. Now, could we have the report of the treasurer, please? Yes, you may. Current balance in the Regions Bank business checking account, $44,600.67. Current balance in the money market account, $1,384,937. And within that are the uh, balance of our seawall loan, $176,129.53. The funds from the Trailer Estates Fire Control District, $271,350.20. The balance in our special assessment account, $26,358.77. And the district other fund is $900. And eleven thousand ninety eight dollars and fifty cents. Is there a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So moved. That was Todd. Do I have a second? I'll second. This is Kathy. Any discussion? Yeah, I've I've got a question, Louis. At, at what point? Because. We were going to fund the um, our park manager uh, at least 50% out of the uncommitted funds from Trailer State's Fire Control District. At what point will that those funds switch out of that account to cover that? We'll make those changes at year end when we're reconciling the year end. Oh, okay. Okay, come on, it's year end. This is the second. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 okay get right on I'm it good <laughs> okay any other discussion thanks louis i appreciate it yep any other discussion all those in favor of approving the treasurer report is read please say aye. aye aye those opposed please say nay report is passed now do we have any bills no sir none all right <laughs> First of the year. Okay, we'll jump right on into the uh, uh, first agenda. Uh, the first item we had was the insurance renewals for the fiscal year 2023-2024. Lewis? Like a motion, make a motion to approve the proposal from Aegis Insurance and Risk Advisors for Property and Casualty for Workers' Compensation, Flood, and Trustee Bond Insurances. I'll second that motion, Todd. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Second item we had was the update to the uh, marina lease and to remove PP22. I got to find it. I have all this. Would it be easier? Yeah, you know, I'll get it here. No, I, I got to change something there too. I mean, you have your notes. No. Oh. Hang on, I'm flipping pages. Please. Lori, he needs your little tab markers, please. I need one of those little rubber <laughs> fingers. <laughs> you, you know, you know, Russell, I forgot to pack them when I came up north, and I'm too cheap to buy them. So I've been dog ear in my corners so that I can find the next the next topic fast. <clears throat> okay, uh, I make a motion to approve the updated marine lease as attached and approved by district council, remove PP22, which was the actual marina lease from the policies and procedures that is no longer required to be the policy and procedures. 
I'll second that. I'll motion. second that. Now I have to amend that motion to include the changes that were previously discussed mm -hmm. in the workshop. So, right, Dwayne, before before you amend, uh, first off, whose second did you take, mine or Todd's? Uh, Todd, you're sitting closer. He might hit me. <laughs> That's okay. That's not a problem. None whatsoever. Um, all right. Before you amend it for what you're saying, you, we, in the past, we always would have done this as two separate motions. One motion would have been to approve the Marina lease. A, a total separate motion would be to remove PP22. Um, is there a reason why we are going to try to lump them together? Uh, because the... I, I have Save a reason tree. for that. Yeah. So as you amend, would you amend it to separate and make the first motion to do the marina lease and whatever you're doing with the marina lease, and then do a second motion and a second vote for removing PP22? Please. I'd like to, to do it all at one time, separating to. everything. Yeah, else. let's... Um, yeah, it's really not you guys don't think that's if you guys don't think it's necessary that's fine that's just how we've always done it i, I guess i'm past. trying to streamline and uh, okay. replacing pp22 uh mm -hmm. with the new lease on how we vote on on the matter it's going to affect both items so if we vote yay to approve it that automatically deletes mm -hmm. the pp22 right. uh, really kind of they're kind of tied together so, yes, yeah so how do I go ahead and amend my motion now to include the changes from the uh, workshop? You would just... um, the changes from the workshop was to remove the, the last sentence of number eight and uh, correct the page numbers. Yep. Um, so it would be to approve the updated Marina lease agreement as attached and amended in the workshop. As amended. And then yeah. as amended in the workshop, in today's workshop. There you go. Today's workshop. Um, and then the workshop minutes will cover the, the fact that it was the last sentence of number eight and the page numbering that was fixed. Okay, so I, showed, I should reread this whole amendment or uh, so, motion. Yes, to, to approve the updated Marina lease agreement as attached and amended in today's workshop and approved by district council, and then go on with the remove PP22. Okay, which, wait, wait, I have a comment before you do it. So the workshop minutes are gonna say striking the last sentence of item A, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Not yes. just discussed, it has, it's, I, I wanted to say that we discussed it and agreed to well, strike. You can make the motion say um, to approve no. the updated Marina lease agreement as attached, also removing the last sentence in number eight and fixing page numbers and approved by district council. All I care about is someplace that says what the change was in the workshop. Right, I agree. And she's going to say that. Okay. It, 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 can't, it can't hurt to say it in both places. Let's say it in both places. Okay. Then you don't have to do so much research if you go backwards and try to figure this out. You can see it. Thank you. Okay, let me let me try doing this. Uh, I make a motion to approve the updated marine lease as attached and approved by district council as amended in the 10 to 2023 workshop and remove PP22, which was the actual marine lease from the policy and procedures as it's no longer required to be the policy and procedure. And I should have said and remove and remove the last sentence in paragraph eight and to amend the pages to be read as one of eight pages. And I'll second that motion also. Out again. Yeah, covered it all. Got her handle. That cover it? Yep. Any okay. discussion? No. All those in favor of approving the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Those aye. 
Those opposed, please say nay. Motion is passed. Uh, the next item we have is the replace PP46. And let me get to that. And we're going to have some changes. I'm thumbing. <clears throat> okay, uh, I make a motion to approve the updated marine rules as attached and replace PP46. I'll second that. Russell. Okay. Um, if can can we get away with uh, having a discussion now, uh, Duane, that says remove L and approve us, and then uh, and then we can approve it as corrected, or do you have to fix your motion? I'll fix the motion. Uh, okay. I make a motion to approve the updated marine lease as attached and replace PP forty six and remove item L from the not a policy. Yeah, it is a policy. Yeah, it is a policy. Uh, from the policy as amended as a as discussed in the 10 to 2023 workshop. Do I have a second for that? Is it sure I'll second it? Should be Russell again. Oh, it, Russell. it needs to be I'll Russell second. to be a friendly okay. I'll second that, Wayne. Russell did uh, second that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. These poor trees. <laughs> okay, next item is the uh, replace, I'm sorry, North Fence Replacement, Todd. All right, I'll make a motion to replace the North Fence at a cost of $83,500. I'll second that, Rod. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Stage. Next item we have is the uh, stage cur curtain replacements. Todd? Okay. Make a motion to replace the stage curtains at a cost of not to exceed $27,000. I, I, I second that. Do, this is Kathy. Second it. Okay. Any discussion? Do we want to amend that to the smaller figure? Uh, yeah. Or think, just still leave it not to exceed 27? 14. That's well, going to be less than the 14, which is in the other. Is, is 14 is satisfactory. Yeah. Yeah. Less, not to exceed 14,000. 14, 14, All right. So I'll amend, I'll amend my motion to say motion to replace the stage curtains at a cost of not to exceed 14000 Kathy, would you second that again? Yes, I will. Should we put Todd, pick the colors of them in there? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. And the last item we have on there is to uh, delete, rescind PP6, the trustee's protection policy. Uh, I make a motion to delete and rescind PP6 in its entirety as it is covered in section 21 of the charter. I'll second that. 
Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Motion is passed. Is that all my items? Yep. Okay, do we have any trustee uh, staff comments, final comments? Hearing none, do we have any unfinished business? And with that, I think we're out of agenda items. I will uh, adjourn the uh, Board of Trustees meeting at 1140. Please turn off your microphones. Fever. <laughs> Fever. 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 Fever